Audio Log 107. Universal Time 914072120018. Subject Judgment of Humanity. Writer Captain Nerva of the Crenal Sector. Begin. Over the past few months, I have been observing the humans with utmost and personal care. They are truly one of the most complex creatures I have ever met to this date. How they seem to interact, not only with the other animals on the planet, but themselves, is most alarming. I have never met a kind that truly loved and hated its own existence. A species that's willing to protect or kill for the most minor differences of their human forms. Whether it's by belief of an afterlife, the pigmentation of their skin that allows them protection from the Solaris star, or who they choose as their life partner and who they not choose. For all their accomplishments, there are equal and devastating failures. The Krenol have seen the humans as either a hope for the galaxies around them or their utmost destruction. However, I am one of hope. I believe the humans could be a key to a better universe. If they learn from their mistakes, they can explore outside their realm. They can discover cures for the most horrid of diseases. They can learn to battle their own inner mentality when it fights back against them. They can change things from a molecular level for their own benefit. And so, I, Captain Nerva, will choose to secure, contain, and protect humanity from the outside realm until it is ready. But also, secure, contain, and and protect the outside realm from the Earth itself, should it ever choose to go down the wrong path. The Krenol have given the human race a rather unfortunate name. However, it seems most fitting for this project. Commencing the protection of Project Orc. Audio file saved. <sighs> The Merka will not have this world. I swear it. Today's short story is brought to you by the Impala Lord. And after this story, we'll talk about the Project Orc video from a while ago. Stay tuned. We abducted humans. To be fair, we abducted members of every new race. Abduct a small percentage of the population. Expose them to some galactic prisoners, and we get a good idea of what germs, diseases, and viruses will make the jump between races. Do this over a course of roughly equivalent to a century, and you get an idea of what there is, how quickly it mutates, etc., etc. You also have the time to develop vaccines for any races that might be affected by the new race, including itself. We're not heartless. But we underestimated humans. It was roughly equivalent to four decades into our testing of humanity. We picked up a human from his transport and placed him in a containment cell. He had some nutrients with him, and we picked that up too, lest we had to feed him later. But we underestimated the resourcefulness of humans. Something went wrong. We think it was a door malfunction and he escaped the cell. He disabled the guards easily, we suspect they were less alert than they should have been, and took their weapons. We locked all hatches, hoping to seal them in the laboratory wing. Unfortunately, he hacked the shipboard computer, gaining control of all systems. He made his way to the bridge where he took the captain hostage. We offered him riches, technology beyond human understanding. But we underestimated the stubbornness he paid us no mind as he wrestled with the controls, as if on some quest. He punched numbers and figures in the consoles, and mumbled something about being lit on fire by a superior. He set the ship down on the other side of the city from where he was picked up and opened the doors. We braced ourselves for military confrontation, but it seemed like we were outside another human's abode. He jumped out, carrying the nutrients with him. We underestimated 
Domino's, 30 minutes or free guarantee. To this day, we still have no idea what Domino's is. Thank you guys for listening in. So, Project Orc, let's talk about that for a second. Let's start off with the bad news. The bad news is I most likely will not be continuing the versions of Humans Are Space Orcs with reading YouTube comments with the back and forth between Nerva and just normal human beings. The good news is Project Orc is a series I'm planning on doing when I move to Los Angeles and have a better setup for it. The original idea for it was to be a radio play, but I feel like when I'm in a better environment and have the funding to do so, Project Orc, I would like to make into an animated series. Something relatively short though, probably just a one season dealio. But the idea for Project Orc is to not only have some comedic aspects like we've had with this story and a bunch of the other ones that I've did with YouTube comments, but actually handling some hard hitting issues with just our environment and humanity in general. It's one of those things I would love to have come into fruition and only time will tell if that actually happens. But for now, I'll do what I can and read the short stories that are provided on Tumblr because Impala Lord and a bunch of other people create fantastic short pieces that are beautiful. And without them, they would not have inspired the idea of Project Orc in the first place. So give them some love and I'll be getting back to work on some storyboarding ideas for Project Orc. See you guys around. I know a couple of people were curious about how Nerva from Project Orc is supposed to look. One lovely from Tumblr actually reached out to me asking about how Nerva actually, how would I describe how Nerva to look. So let's read it off. So in case any of you guys want to draw some fun stuff for Nerva, by all means, now you have a visual reference of what to use. Hey, I just got back from your Project Orc video and I was wondering, the writer, do you have a description hammered out of what they look like? Not only for yourself, but also for any potential artist whom are interested. Thank you kindly and everything, Peace Man. I like Peace Man, that's a good one. Why yes, the Crenol are very tall, skinny aliens with cloven hoofed feet, one pair of eyes with double eyelids and four arms. Their skin ranges from lavender, azure, teal, seafoam green and sky blue. Nerva in particular is lavender. The colors originate from Krina's plant life and the denizen skins become the colors of the first plants they ingest. Their clothing consists of many long robes with reinforced plating to guard their vital organs. The robes contain hidden pockets within the sleeves for tomes, kits, and weaponry in case of emergencies. Nerva always keeps a tome for note-taking, two self-defense stun staffs, and a memento of his first contact with humans. A ragged little green man doll. A small human child brought me to a fair and won it with this hammer contest thing that they do. It's very precious to me and I will protect it with my life. While we're here, let's talk about a few other fun facts about Nerva. Nerva is actually a short version of what his full name is supposed to be. The humans just started calling him Nerva because it was easier to remember. Also because it fully reflected his very short-tempered personality. His full name is Nerva Casano. He also decided to change what the abbreviation for the project stood for in Project Orc. The rulers of Krina named it Orc, which stood for Ominous Reckless Carbonites. Before Nerva made first contact and understood that humans weren't so bad, he decided to rename the project Oversee, Restrain, Coexist. Which does reflect a lot more for what the project is supposed to be doing, but also understanding if they found out the project name was calling them ominous and reckless, they would probably do something very ominous and very reckless. And the final fun fact that we're gonna talk about is might also be what I plan to have be the pilot episode for. The first human that Nerva made contact with is a young boy named Riley, a young boy living in the heart of the Bronx, where, in my opinion, looking into this series, it was an ideal spot for Nerva to see truly the best and some of the worst in humans. But we'll actually dive into that when I actually start writing this series more. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Been a while since I've done one of these. Today's Space Orc story is brought to you by the one and only the Impala Lord. Check him out on Tumblr. I remember the war with humanity. It was our first and last mistake. The last war of the Dorizon. The war that destroyed us. I was barely a hatchling at the time the war started. Barely enough to understand what the politicians were saying. Never mind understand the intricacies of intergalactic politics. <laughs> it was some dispute about colonization rights. Something trivial and unimportant. 
but something we foolishly thought was that destroying a human vessel was worth it. I remember the first days of the war, the propaganda on the vid screens, the pictures of our soldiers on the front lines winning victory after victory, the comparison of the primitive human weapons to our advanced technology. They showed us bedraggled human prisoners after they surrendered, made them read statements of aggression and war guilt for the news feeds. But those vids never told us that for every one human they killed, they killed ten of us. We took the worlds we wanted, then got greedy and took some more. The humans were professionals, but we had numbers. City after city fell beneath our guns. Enslaved human populations churned out weapons for use on their own kind. But even as we broke their fleet at Clizan, sent their ships into that dying star, we realized we were losing. Every world we took, they made us pay in tenfold. They sent assassins behind our lines to kill our leaders. Small units of soldiers to sabotage our factories. We learned that we had stretched ourselves too thin against an enemy that refused to lose. We fell back with nowhere left to go. The only worlds left were ours. I watched as the humans scattered our fleets in the upper atmosphere. The burning husks of our ships filling the skies. The smell of ozone as an orbital lance annihilated a military base not ten kilometers from where I stood. The look of shame as the Grand Council transmitted our complete and utter surrender. And I remember too, the first time I saw a human. Tall and upright, a giant of muscle and bone, the eyes of a predator on the hunt. I remember him gesturing me over to him and the certainty of my death filling my mind. I was a child, but I was prepared to die for the Dreisel, a sacrifice to allow the humans to take their fully justified revenge upon us. And I remember my first taste of the chocolate bar he gave me. The human revenge was total. From the ruins, they built schools and roads, hospitals and sanitation plants. The human engineer brought running water free of parasites to my family's stack for the first time. They inoculated us against diseases the council had never bothered to cure. They wrought revenge with words we'd never heard. Democracy, freedom, brotherhood. They wrought it in the form of human rights. And most powerfully of all, forgiveness. And their revenge was total. Within ten years, human children in Dreisel were playing together on the fields outside of school. In fifteen, they were fighting alongside against the Shulaman. Forty years from the day the humans landed on our worlds, and the Dreisel no longer exist. Admitted to humanity, nominated by Tarans, and approved by a unanimous decision of the human parliament, the sixth species to gain such an honor. The Dreisel no longer exist, but humanity grew stronger. Yes, I remember our war with humanity. Our last and best mistake. President Stephen Azili of the Dreisel, giving a speech celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Dreisel's admittance to humanity. Possible outcome 71. Ending transmission. Hmm. This is but one of the many outcomes the human race could have on our universe. Sure, they brought peace, but at what cost? Computer, keep searching for an outcome where all sides have a happy ending. Of course, Captain. If it takes the next century, I'll find one where nobody has to die as much. Maybe chasing a fool's dream, but humans taught me how to be stubborn. Might as well learn how to use it. It's just easier.
Like, why would you use a mouth if you could just shove your thoughts? Yeah, but what if you send something you don't want to? Well, that happens, and it's a mistake. Are you saying humans don't say stuff they don't mean? Well, I guess, but using a mouth has one advantage. What? We have farther range, perfect clarity, and less chance of being overheard. Yes, but you can do this. Hey, I think that Angela chick is pretty hot. What? What what is the purpose? (laughs) How does that even work? Human, what is this in your hand? Oh, it's a burger. Why does it contain several fleshy substances from the biological parts of the so-called animal kingdom? Well, that's because... Wait, did you just say several? Yes, human. This bio compound clearly has been created using several mammals. Does it please your oil fixture? Uh, 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 uh. Sometimes you humans disgust me. What about that hot dog over there? Oh, God. Human, when do you plan on going to other planets? Uh, probably not for a long, long time. Why? If you have the power, why can't you just go there? Procrastination. And who else is just procrastinating? Everyone. What is this you are watching? Oh, it's called YouTube. Basically, it's where people share videos online. But why are they only talking about the content that they wish to record? They should just do it. Because the longer people watch, the more money the people creating the videos make. Really? Yeah, but- Hello, Earthlings! Today on this Earthling YouTube, we shall- Human, why are there Lateranians in your video game? Wait, are you saying headcrabs are real? Of course! Why else would I seek refuge with you? Oh, God! Hey, Zichu! High five! Oh, all right then! High five! Uh, Human John? (laughs) Yeah? That's not a five. That's a peace sign. It is a five! It's a Roman five! Blitz! I am so fucking done with you humans. Human Ted, what is a fetish? <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't need to know that one. What do they mean when you say a oh, woe? Oh, that's just a combination of letters that look like a face when written down. But if it's meant to be written, why do you say it? Oh. Human, are you commanding vast military resources to train for and launch a campaign against the enemies of your people? What? No, no, no. This is Command & Conqueror. It's a real-time strategy game. Basically, we train virtual armies and try to use various tactics to destroy our opponents. And do you pick your commanders from achieving many victories in such simulations? No, no. We just do this for fun. So, to you, war is a game. Why am I no longer shocked by the barbarity of your people? You've been around us for too long. Find new specimens. Hey, you know what? Maybe I will! Human, what is this machine for? No idea. You don't know. Well, the horror movies only tell it's used for murder. (sighs) Barbarians, all of you. Homo sapien Ted, what is that colossal body of water over there? Oh, it's called an ocean. Why is there plastic in it? That's called pollution. It's a big problem. Then why don't you solve it? Oh. Hey, human? Yeah? His name isn't Cthulhu, it's Ted. Now we just a gosh diddly darn second! Human, what in the galaxy is this? That's a gun. No, this is a gun. So is this, just less advanced. Also, where did you get that? That I cannot tell you, human. I know better than that. Data log 438. Today I was once again reminded just how bizarre human culture is. A human had their ankle injured by a cleaning robot with a knife taped to it. To my question why the humans were laughing at the victim, they merely responded, he should have taken stabby countermeasures, and continued to giggle at the other's misfortune. As to why the cleaning robot even had a knife in the first place, it was revealed that this was mostly to keep the crew on edge, as well as to fulfill a so-called meme of the 21st century. Now on to more important topics, the- You should have taken stabby countermeasures! Human, I was playing one of your video-based entertainment devices for research, and this showed up. What does it mean? Oh, this is hardcore mode. If you die, you stay dead, and it's really difficult. Intriguing. Do all humans enjoy simulating the feeling of death? Well, you know, when you say it that way, that just sounds kind of weird. Human, I will be back soon! Human, I have created a hardcore mode for this, and I am forcing you to play it. What exactly is hardcore mode? If you die in it, you die in real life! Wait, Nerva, no! Nerva, yes! Hey, this guy. That guy? Oh, hey, Nerva, got the night off? For now, at least. Who is that guy? One sec. Fascinating, so he thinks we help. Yeah, he's a cracked pot. Seems like it. Not enough spirals if we had. Though we did watch. Human architect amused us back then. 
Wait, you visited us? Observation only. We still have a few of your people from that era on board in our cryo storage. Dead, but otherwise they had a long, fulfilling life on board. How long have you been watching us? Long enough. We want to make contact soon. Not at any time now, but soon. Human, what are you doing? Oh, I'm playing a video game about humans going on an alien planet, but instead they get shot, so they need to survive on a water cover planet. What are you saying? That's planet 61130 s Prepare the ship. Human Yoshito, the planet is on quarantine. I know how to fix it, Nerva! Start the ship! Today's Space Orc story is brought to you by the one and only Impala Lord. Humans. Humans. This species, hailing from the planet called Earth, is the most contradictory species I have ever had the pleasure and displeasure of knowing. I have studied human history extensively. Their past is littered with atrocious acts of violence and discrimination on their own kind, no less. Yet with every heinous act committed, there was a period of healing and acceptance. Great groups of people would rally together to comfort each other of their loss and their sadness. I've never known a species with the capacity to love and hate itself at the same time as much as the humans do. They can do the most despicable things to each other over such minor differences, and yet that very same hate can so easily be put aside in times of sorrow and grief. What's more, they can be spurred into action by the vaguest of ideals. Freedom, justice, peace, love, money, and many more. During my time on Earth, learning about its history and different cultures, I met two soldiers. One was of the military, assigned to keep watch over me and protect me. And the other was a rebel, who I met accidentally at a local drinking establishment. <laughs> I asked them both the same question and was surprised by their answers. I asked them why they decided to take the life that they had. They both answered me with a simple phrase, to survive. When I asked to elaborate, the soldier said, and I quote, I became a soldier to fight, to safeguard my people against anything that threatens them, to become a shield for humanity, for Earth and all her allies. The rebel said, I became a mercenary not because I wanted to, but because I had to. When the Garden seized a colony, my colony, I realized something. The government can't always act and do what's right, even if they know that not doing anything is wrong. They have rules that keep the peace, and I acknowledge that. So I decided to take up arms when the government couldn't. I will become a spear for humanity. Protecting it when its protectors cannot. I will never forget those two. Not only for their convictions towards their cause, but because not two years later I received news of their untimely demise. They died doing what they said they would be. The shield and the spear. But humans are a fragile species with no natural defense against threats. Yet their unremarkable ability to adapt has led them to become the most numerous of all the species in the Confederacy. They can go just about anywhere, any previously inhospitable environment, not only managing to survive, but also thrive there. They are soldiers, but are also scholars. They are explorers but are also settlers. They are builders, but are also destroyers. They are fragile, yet the most durable. They are weak, but also strong. I think we can all stand and learn a thing or two from them. Professor Cree Null of the Chlorin, when asked of his opinions towards humans of Earth, end of transmission. And I am to assume this is one of the fewer good outcomes, Commuter. That is correct. 
I suppose it is one I could accept. At the end of the day, fate is not something I can have full control over after all. But if this is one of the outcomes that can happen, then maybe if I can help steer it in the right direction, I can accept that. Commence Project Orc. Of course, Captain. 